This is MathHeals.com if you want to come out for um, more links to YouTube videos on how to do math. Let's take a look at dividing polynomials. And let's take a look at our first problem. And we've got 15 x to the fifth minus 10x squared plus 5 over 10x squared. Now, key part on this is this is division where you have a monomial down here. So you're dividing by a monomial. What you do here is you split into separate fractions. and simplify. So split into separate fractions and simplify. So we're going to take each term up on top and we'll put it over the denominator. So this problem becomes 15 x to the fifth over 10 x squared minus 10 x squared over 10 x squared plus 5 over 10 x squared. So again, split into separate fractions and simplify. Put each term over the denominator. <coughs> well, our first fraction here, 15 and 10 are both divisible by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 10 divided by 5 is 2. We have x to a power over x to a power. We subtract the, sm subtract the uh, smaller exponent from the larger one. 5 minus 2 is 3. And we have x to the third power where our larger exponent was, which was on top minus 10 divided by 10 uh, gives you 1. Uh, so 1 here and 1 here. And the x squareds cancel because they're the same. Over here 5 and 10 gives you 1 half, both divisible by 5, and then x squared down here. So we have 3 halves x to the third. You can put the x to the third up on top to the side like that or leave it up on top, doesn't matter. Minus 1 plus 1 over 2x squared. Now notice we can't put the x squared out in front uh, or behind uh, in this problem because it's down in the denominator. Or in this fraction, I should say. <coughs> so that's our answer. Let's take a look at another one with a uh, monomial in the denominator. So we got 12 m to the 4th, n to the 7th, minus 15 m to the 13th, n to the 7th, over negative 3, m to the 10th, n to the 12th. Now again, we have a monomial down in the denominator, so we're going to split them into separate fractions. So I got 12 m to the 4th, n to the 7th, over negative 3, m to the 10th, n to the 12th minus 15 m to the 13th n to the 7th over negative 3 m to the 10th n to the 12th. And let's simplify each fraction. Uh, 12 and negative 3 both divisible by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is negative, or wait a minute. 12 divided by 3, I better go to bed. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. Now here we have m to a power over m to a, m to a power. Subtract a smaller exponent from the larger one. 10 minus 4 gives me 6. And we have m to the 6 where the larger one was, which is downstairs. Larger exponent, that is. Now we got n to the 7th over n to the 12th. Subtract a smaller exponent from the larger one. 12 minus 7 gives us 5. And we have n to the 5th where the larger exponent was, which is downstairs. Now here we got negative negative, that becomes a positive. 15 and 3 both divisible by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. We have m to a power over m to a power. Subtract a smaller exponent from the larger one. 13 minus 10 gives you 3, and you have m to the third where your larger exponent was, which is up on top. n to the 7th over n to the 12th. 
Uh, again, subtract a small exponent from larger one. 12 minus 7 is 5, and you have n to the fifth where the larger one was, which was in the denominator. <coughs> so this gives us, I'll put negative up on top, negative 4 over m to the sixth, n to the fifth, plus 5m to the third over n to the fifth. And that's our answer. And let me do that. Try it again. There we go. <coughs> now these next problems are um, different. Instead of having a monomial down here, we have a uh, two terms. We have a binomial, or you could have three terms, or however many. Um, but it's not not a monomial. So these we handle differently. This re refresh our memory on just a simple simple number example. Remember on these we take a look at the eleven. Doesn't go into three. It doesn't go into thirty though. We ask ourselves what times eleven either gives us thirty or as close as we can get to thirty. And that'd be two. <coughs> now whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's out in front. So 2 times 11 gives us 22. I always kid my students about this in class. I said, we, well, we go ahead and multiply or add these together. 30 plus 22 gives us 52. And they said, no, 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 you subtract it. And I said, well, what do you mean? This is a positive 22. Um, well, when we subtract this, basically we're flipping its sign. It goes from a positive 22 to a negative 22. And 30 minus 22 gives us 8. And then the, depending upon who taught you division, either leave them up there or bring them down. So let's look at this problem. X minus 7. <coughs> and it says find a quotient using long division. So we got x squared minus 3x minus 28. And the steps for this are almost exactly the same as what we did here. Some ways are a little bit easier even. Now we're going to look at the first term of each and decide what to put up on top. Now, it's not like how close can you get, it's always exact. So you ask yourself, what times x gives you x squared? And that'd be x. Well, think what we did over here. Whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's out in front. 2 times 11 gave you your 22. So whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's out in front. So we'll take x times x minus 7. And that gives us x squared minus 7x. <coughs> Now over here, we had um, a positive 22, and we flipped a sign when we subtracted it. Um, a lot of people do this in their head, and that's fantastic, but I can't show you steps in my head on this little tablet very well. So I'll actually flip the signs here. So whenever you subtract this line, it basically amounts to flipping the signs. So this becomes negative, and this becomes positive. Well, x squared minus x squared drops away. Negative 3x plus 7x gives us 4x. And uh, I was taught to bring everything down division-wise, so bring down negative 28. And then we go through the process again. <coughs> you look at only the first term of each, decide what to put up on top. You ask yourself, what times x gives you 4x? And that would be 4. Now, whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's on front. So we're going to take 4 times x minus 7. So that gives us 4x minus 28. And we're going to subtract that line, which subtract basically means flip signs. So this becomes negative, and this becomes positive. 4x minus 4x drops away. Negative 28 plus 28 gives us 0. And that would be our remainder. So our answer is x plus 4. <coughs> Let's look at another one. We've got x plus 3. And then we got x to the third plus 8x squared plus 14x minus 3. Okay, now we only look at the first term of each, decide what to put up on top. You ask yourself what times x gives you x to the third, and that'd be x squared. 
Now whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's on front. So we're going to take x squared times x plus 3. x squared times x gives us x to the third. x squared times 3 gives us 3x squared. So write those down there. Now we're going to subtract that line, which means flip the signs. So this becomes negative, this becomes negative x to the third minus x to the third drops away, 8x squared minus 3x squared gives us 5x squared, and then I'll bring down all the rest. We look at the first term of each, decide what to put up on top. You ask yourself what times x gives you 5x squared, and that's 5x. Whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's out in front. So we're going to take 5x times x plus 3, 5x times x is 5x squared, 5x times 3 is 15x. Now we're going to subtract that line, which means flip the signs. So this becomes negative, this becomes negative. 5x squared minus 5x squared drops away. 14x minus 15x gives us negative 1x, and I'll bring down the minus 3. Again, we look at the first term of each side, what to put up on top. What times x gives us negative 1x, and that's negative 1. Whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's on front. So I'll take negative 1 times x plus 3. I, negative 1 times x gives us negative 1x, or negative x if you want to do it that way. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. We're going to subtract that line, which means flip the signs. So that becomes positive, this becomes positive. Negative 1x plus 1x drops away. Negative 3 plus 3 gives us 0. And that's our answer. <coughs> Let me start a new page here. And let's look at our next problem. We got x plus 2, and then we got 3x squared plus x minus 10. Now again, uh, for long division here, we'll, we'll uh, take a look at the, the first term, decide what to put up on top. You ask yourself what times x gives you 3x squared, and that'd be 3x. Whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's out in front. So we'll take 3x times x plus 2. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 gives us 6x. Now we're going to subtract that line, which means flip signs. So this becomes negative. I didn't do that right color, did I? Uh, not that it matters, but... Okay, so this becomes negative, this becomes negative. 3x squared minus 3x squared drops away. x minus 6x gives us negative 5x minus 10. Now again, we'll look at the first term of each, decide what to put up on top. You ask yourself what times x gives you negative 5x, and that'd be negative 5. Now whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's out in front. So we'll take negative 5 times x which is negative 5x, and negative 5 times 2, which gives us negative 10. <coughs> We're going to subtract that line, which flip means flip signs, so this becomes positive, this becomes positive. Negative 5x plus 5x drops away, negative 10 plus 10 gives you 0. And this would be our answer. Take a look at this next problem. This one has a note that goes along with it. Everything must be in standard form.
Now everything up to now has been, but this one isn't. Standard form is uh, the terms arranged from largest power down to smallest. <coughs> so I'm going to put the x first and the negative 3 second. And here I need the x squared first. I need the x of first power next. So negative 10x. And then my no x, my constant term at the end. So everything must be in standard form. If you don't write in standard form, you're probably never going to be able to s actually figure that problem out. And then we'll go through a process. You look at the first term of each, and you ask yourself what times x gives you x squared, and that'd be x. Now whatever you put up on top, you're going to multiply by what's out in front. So we're going to take x times x minus 3. That gives us x squared minus 3x. Now we're going to subtract that line, which means flip the signs. So this becomes negative, and this becomes positive. x squared minus x squared drops away. Negative 10x plus 3x gives us negative 7x. And then I'll bring down the plus 13. Now again, we look at the first term of each, decide what to put up on top. You ask yourself what times x gives you negative 7x, and that'd be negative 7. Whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's out in front. So we're going to take negative 7 times x minus 3. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. Negative 7 times negative 3 is 21. Now we're going to subtract that line, which means flip the signs. So this becomes positive, and this becomes negative. Negative 7x plus 7x drops away. Negative, or 13 minus 21 gives us was that negative 8? Now the degree, if you remember, degree is your largest power of x. This is x the first, so this degree would be 1. And this is no x, there's no x here, so a degree is 0. When a degree of this becomes less than this, this is your remainder. And how you write this is you take your x minus 7, and you put your remainder over what you're dividing by. So we've got x minus 7 plus negative 8 over x minus 3. Now some books will show putting that negative out in front, and that's fine. I don't care how you do it. Uh, the books that put up on top here want to really emphasize that your remainder is a negative 8. Now our last problem. we have got negative 1 plus 5x and 25x squared minus 10. Okay, we've already mentioned they must be in standard form. Now they also, if you're missing any powers, you need to put zero placeholders for it. So our second thing we'll do is put, um, put zero placeholders for missing powers. So put zero placeholders for missing powers. Okay, this five, negative 1 plus 5x. So 5x has to go first to be in standard form. So I rearrange that. The 25x squared is our largest power, so that's good. Um, but we're missing the x, so I'm going to put a 0x here and then a minus 10. So if you're missing any powers at all, like we don't have x the first, you put a zero placeholder there. And now we start our process. Uh, take a look at the first term of each, decide what to put up on top. You ask yourself what times 5x gives you 25x squared, and that'd be 5x. Now whatever you put up on top, you multiply by what's out in front. So we're going to take 5x times 5x minus 1. That gives us 25x squared minus 5x. Now we're going to subtract that line, which means flip the signs. So this becomes negative, and this becomes positive. 25x squared minus 25x squared drops away. 0x plus 5x gives us 5x, and then I'll bring down the minus 10. Now again, we look at the first term of each, decide what to put up on top. You ask yourself what times 5x gives you 5x, and that'd be 1. 
So whatever we put up on top, we multiply by what's out in front. So 1 times 5x gives us 5x. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. We're going to subtract that, which means we'll flip the signs. So 5x becomes negative, the negative 1 becomes positive. Now 5x minus 5x drops away, negative 10 plus 1 gives us a negative 9. And this is our remainder. So we've got 5x plus 1 plus, and we'll put our remainder over what we're dividing by. So negative 9 over 5x minus 1. And that's our answer. And the end of that section, too.